really sort of get this show on the road. boop a doop a doop a boop 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 Get it. Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you are doing well. And right here live on Twitch, but replayable on YouTube, we are doing an exclusive interview with the one, the only one half of the most beloved but also polarizing music duos on the internet right now, 100 Gex, uh, Miss Laura Less. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. How are you? Good. Thank you for coming through. Thank you for spending your time with us. So generous of with course. your time during the Not pandemic. Not like I'm busy or anything. Not like this is a crucial part of my day I could be using to work. No, well, this, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. You're you're but you're in like a studio space right now, right? I am. No, I actually I I am pausing work to do this. But Okay, okay. Not in the way that I was implying. Okay. I am totally cool with it, and I am so happy to be here talking to you. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you later about maybe some of the new stuff that you're cooking up. So keep keep that at the top of your mind. Um, okay. Even though it's been out for a little bit, I do want to ask you maybe some questions though about um, obviously the remix project that you guys dropped this year, uh, Tree of Clues, because it's such a unique and unorthodox remix project. Um, I know that you and Dylan, in order to kind of get things going, were throwing a lot of stems out there from songs, uh, you know, from the original 1000 Gex. Um, but how exactly did we reach this point where we have so many different voices from so many different walks of life in modern music all compiling onto single songs and somehow the insanity <laughs> comes together in a way that I guess uh, serves the song and uh, I, I guess reinvents it in a way. Those are very good words. Um, we did not think of it hmm. in such a grand way. Um, we got offers to do like remixes on a couple of them. And we were like thinking about doing them. We were going to drop the stems anyway, because we just think that's a cool like thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and like one or two people hit us up and were like, we'd be interested in doing an, a remix. And then we asked a couple people if they'd want to. And they were down, so it just sort of like snowballed into a whole like project. Um, so we, I mean, but we were we were loving it. But that's why it's. I mean, I guess if you're saying like, you know, all the different things coming together, it's because it just was like a couple people from over here, a couple people from over here. Um, like Ninety Nine Jakes is like a friend of mine, mm -hmm. um, so. I just asked them to do it. Um, and then we had the couple that were on uh, SoundCloud that we picked. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's uh, sort of just it's it seems thrown together because it is thrown together. But I, in a way that we were happy with. So, Like, how exactly does a group such as Fallout Boy, you know, come into frame when it comes to assembling this thing, for example? Um, we did, we met Pete mm. and we were just like talking and like throwing around ideas. And then magically the, I, I really don't remember how it happened. Like magically I get a text that's mm. like, oh, yo, we have these stems. And then we were like let's let's go like let's do it um so that yeah i don't know it, it really is sort of like a blur like we just were getting and it happened over like a pretty long period of time like as people were sort of like jumping on board and you know things were growing and stuff more and more people were like wanting to get on um so yeah it, it really did just kind of like snowball from just like we're going to drop the stems. We should remix a couple of the songs or something. And I, I guess uh, to go off of what you just said, what has been kind of your personal feelings on this incredible snowball effect? Because, I mean, you guys haven't merely reached, I, I guess, sort of, or merely achieved like 
some kind of obscure cult following type popularity. There's like an insane craze that is literally building off of your sound that is uh, not only just like creating people who are utterly obsessed with it, but copycats too. And um, I don't know, I'm sure it's a lot to process. It, yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, never thought any of this would happen. Mm. So, I mean, just like getting used to it, but like, you know, it's sick. Yeah. I mean, uh, never, I mean, I'm, able to do things or I've done things now that I never thought I would ever get the opportunity to do like sign a big deal. Like I was like, that doesn't fucking happen. Like for people mm. like regular people don't like actually sign like fucking big fat cat contract. I mean, not saying we got like a fucking Kanye West deal or something, but um, you know, that was, I, that was like a dream come true that I never thought about, um, have met almost all of the people that like, I consider huge heroes of mine. Um, there's still a couple people missing, but never met Daniel Lopatin yet. Hmm. I need to get on that. Um, yeah, but uh i don't know i mean it's it's also like a double-edged sword though it's like i'm not like i don't know <laughs> i'm not into the idea of like stardom or whatever like i just it's cool that we can do a lot of the things that we can do um but yeah yeah i don't know nuanced yeah. nuanced but very overall net good yeah, I mean, I think it definitely says something in, in terms of like how you and Dylan approach fame and also um, your image as a musical duo when you've got the front cover of the record and you're both, you know, turned away from the camera when you're doing the money machine video and everything's like happening so chaotically. It's like all you can really make out is sort of like the long blonde hair and, you know, the outfits and the big truck and sort of the glitches and everything. It's like, you know, you guys aren't necessarily putting yourselves like front and center like your kind of uh, models for a billboard or something to be marketed on yeah we don't we're not into all that stuff i mean like i'm here doing this so i'm obviously like okay with like whatever i mean it's a like just like a reality sure um but yeah i mean as far as like being like a spokesperson for something or you know it's it's cool that people would want to do that but yeah no i mean we just want to make super good fucking amazing music <laughs> and you know speaking of uh of that music and the way people have been talking about it and interpreting it and trying to classify it too and understand it um i think has been a really interesting kind of process i love sort of watching audiences not just consume music but i guess sort of try to make sense of it for themselves and discuss it and reinterpret it and you know it amazes me how there are people who will copycat your stuff and almost like distill it down to like four distinct characteristics like oh you know we have like the blaring guitar the chipmunk vocal the drums sound a little blasted out and this other thing too and oh it's it's essentially gex at that point um i mean i love it i love hmm. all the i i think i mean I think that like it's all like we're all copying something, sure. you know, like we're all pulling from whatever. So if people want to use our stuff as like a main source of inspiration or, you know, like build off of something that we're doing, like love it. There's like this. <laughs> it's nuts. Um, I think somebody sent it to me like a I don't know what country it's from. Um, but it is basically money machine. I think they like use a lot of the stems from money machine and just like are going in over it. Um, and I was like, this is probably the only thing I've heard that's too far in that direction. <laughs> I was like, that's, that is literally just money machine, but 
I mean, other than that, yeah, I mean, everything else has been cool. Yeah, I mean, as you say, we're all borrowing from something. And, and I feel like, though, um, that's also, I, th I think, really much directly in the spirit of what you guys are doing, because there's such a, a strong element of genre clashing to it. And you're sort of like going through these breakneck transitions on some songs, you know, from one style, from one musical aesthetic to the next. And, um, you know, in that sense, it's almost like open source. We're going to like randomly source all of these different bits and sounds and sort of mash them all together, which, you know, also is kind of reiterated in the spirit of the remix record too. I mean, I think, uh, you know, almost like your sound is, is begging to be, kind of like uh, copied and reiterated and revived in, in some way by other people who are fanatics for it. Yeah, I mean, a lot of what I listen to is like, I listen to a lot of like SoundCloud shit post tracks or whatever, you know, like people remixing songs that not many people would remix or something or, you know, putting, you know, like, oh, hard style beats under system of a down or something like you know it's like that that genre clashing that people talk about isn't super like we didn't think it was that weird like when we were listening to the album we were like this is good and energetic and whatever but we didn't think it was like particularly like super weird so, I mean, but it's, I mean, it's cool that everybody, like, it's kind of like opening some people's eyes to sort of this style of something that, uh, that we like. Yeah. And yeah. I, th I think in a way you guys are kind of, uh, bringing back a bunch of sounds that previously have been like critically poo pooed in a way, you know, because I mean, in a lot of very trendy, hip, critically acclaimed records, you don't catch a lot of hard style beats. You don't catch much ska influence. You don't catch a lot of that stuff. I mean, I know that you're familiar with Dorian's work and, and they were very much, you know, kind of embodying a lot of those aesthetics too on, on their new project as well. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think, uh, Dorian, I love Dorian. Um, they kind of share sort of a vibe of us with just like it just whatever bangs you know whatever is gonna bang on the track is what we should do like <laughs> so if it's if that means like putting a dubstep drop or something super sick um and i think that like as long as we just stick to try to do whatever sounds the best then you know the results can't be can't be bad for sure i mean so like you know you get something like you know people saying it's you know it's weird or like it's a lot like broken side or whatever but um yeah i mean you know that stuff will sort it all out it'll sort itself out um and you know, like at the end of the day it's just like is it is it good is it hitting so. I mean, now that you kind of bring that comparison up, I mean, I've had my opinions on it. I know that you've had your opinions. I've on heard it. your opinions. Yeah, yeah you, you've, you've, you've heard my opinions <laughs> on it. But like, you know, do, do you feel like that's an instance of, I guess, musicology malpractice? Like, what, what do you feel like people are hearing in your music that says broken side? And then beyond that, what are they actually missing that <laughs> would actually sort of, you know, illustrate that? that's kind of a ridiculous kind of direct comparison to make in the sense of, Oh, they're obviously like really inspired and just borrowing from all their music. Yeah. I actually, I think I've heard, I, I, I had heard like one, uh, broken side song before the album dropped. And like, mm -hmm. that's not a criticism or whatever. It's just like, I wasn't, uh, super familiar with it, but, um, the uh i think the comparison comes like just we we like a lot of things that are like sort of tangential to that or like from the same time like i love tons of shit that was coming out at the same time as broken side mm. so i think so some of that like just through osmosis permeates in um uh, I think maybe the comparison also like just like the 
the different genres put together, like the rock and, you know, hip hop and uh, electronic stuff all coming together in a certain way. And the like sort of snarky vocal delivery sometimes, you know, I mean, I don't know. You go into like all the different like the genes of it. Um, but uh, what are what are people missing that illustrates the difference? Um, I we're not we're not trying to like. Well, see, I don't know the intentions of Broken Side, so I don't want to say anything mm. <laughs> that might be putting words in in their mouth. Yeah. Um, but I think there's an air of maybe trying intentionally to do some things that we wouldn't do. Like there's, mm, I don't know. I don't know how to say, but there is a difference for sure. Well, I'll, I'll jump in and say like, I, I feel like there's definitely a huge separation in terms of ethos. And I feel like. <clears throat> maybe a lot of the misunderstanding comes from people kind of hearing broken side outside of the context of the MySpace ecosystem that people don't really remember as vividly as I think they should or never experienced. And, you know, for all intents and purposes, broken side was taking and borrowing a lot of very popular trendy sounds within the MySpace sphere. Thanks to the incredibly strong, like scene contingent that was on there. Um, when it came to dance music and pop music and hip hop and, you know, metal core and various strains of screamo and, and kind of taking the most popular and accessible elements of those and bringing them together with, with the very weak production value that they had. And, you know, like you said, I mean, you guys are inspired by a lot of those very same sounds and artists from that era, but your execution is so much more alternative and subversive and actually trying to attempt something experimental when their goal was to more appeal to a mass that was kind of building on a platform, you know, um, which, which they successfully, which they successfully did, you know, they had a lot of passionate fans on the MySpace platform. And when you yeah. sort of moved off of that platform, they had a ton of fucking haters. Um, but you know, beyond that though, Fair. there is sort of a weird phenomenon. I, see as well amongst people who are my age, sort of like in their mid thirties or maybe even a little bit older who maybe at one point like prided themselves on being really hip with music and being really into music. And I'm just seeing like this very strange pattern where you guys are almost becoming like the cutoff for them. Like, <laughs> like you know, it's, it's not even so much like, uh, you know, they, they can't appreciate K-pop or something because if K-pop was around when they were in their 20s, they wouldn't have liked it anyway. You know, uh, you know, these are people who sort of provide pride themselves on being fans of underground music and alternative music. And, and you guys are very much a part of that scene, undoubtedly. And now that, you know, your sort of sound and your vibe is kind of dominating in so many ways, there are people who, again, who are my age or a little bit older who are saying, I, I can't. This is too far for me. This is this is just not me. And do, do you guys feel like, do you guys feel like inadvertently you're a part of a generational divide in a way? Do you feel like you're ushering in something new and that you're sort of appealing to a new generation with your sound? Um, that would be cool. Mm. Uh, assuming that would be cool. Like, I don't know. I'm trying to form an actual thought here. Um, it's fine. It's fine if the people that are like the the real heads, you know, that are a little bit older aren't, you know, fucking with it. It's like such a product of our lives and stuff that we have been listening to forever and mm. I think there might be, you know, like a mentality difference somewhere in there with just like how music should be made, how, you know, like people that are like, I'm into really experimental music are like, this isn't experimental, like, fuck them. It's like, we've never called it experimental, <laughs> like literally just, 
are I don't I don't think we have we might mm. have but like you know I don't know I think just like people are reading into it too deep sometimes and it's like if you don't like it you don't like it that's fine you know um if we're the if we're the cutoff and just the the people that are getting into music now are liking it or you know there's a certain demographic difference mm. there somewhere where yeah that's cool i mean <laughs> i don't know i i feel like i've sort of lost my train of thought but like it's it's fine yeah it's fine if old people don't like it <laughs> not saying you're old <laughs> it's like, oh that's... it's fine if it's fine if everyone hated it like it's <laughs> You know, like I said, we didn't we didn't think that it would be like, you know, super big like this. So mm -hmm. everybody who loves it is a uh, welcome, you know, happy that you're here. Um, and if people don't like it, then that's that's OK. It's OK to not like it. Yeah, I mean, it definitely says to me that there's, I guess, uh, something to be said for for fresh ears who you know, or maybe a little bit more open to something totally new to them and maybe haven't sort of grown up with this preconception of uh, this is automatically good, this is automatically bad, and anything that veers outside of that, you know, is either, like you say, not legitimately experimental or something like that. When, I mean, regardless Yeah, I mean, of, not... I, yeah. Even you can like, like, wild out there stuff, but mm. you, you can just be more into, like, you know, you can be more into, um, like the sound of, you know, dropping a screw down. A, what's the engine thing that makes the really cool noise? You know, <laughs> you can, there's, you know, there's all sorts of experimental stuff like that. I mean, that's, that's cool. Um, we're just, yeah, I mean, we're just, we're just making pop music. So either way, <laughs> either way, it's cool. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think that's where people sort of like kind of miss out on an appreciation of something potentially experimental or out there or adventurous because, you know, something to be experimental doesn't mean that uh, you and Dylan are on the floor face down twiddling a bunch of like, you know, guitar pedals for an hour and just sort of like, you know, waiting for whatever sound comes out of the amplifier. Um, you may be making pop I have music. done that too. Yeah. Also and, cool. And, and, hey, also fun. Also cool. <laughs> yeah. Also fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that's not the only. That's um, that's obviously not the only way to go about it. You know, I I think you guys, while you are making pop music, it sounds unlike much of any other pop music out there. You know, I I feel like you guys really sort of use the genre as a vehicle for your mayhem. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's pretty much you know the ethos is we we like really good solid pop songwriting but we just don't want to make anything boring we want you know to put some shit in it and just let it whatever we're feeling you know go go into it um i think that like the 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 people get too hung up on like terms like mm -hmm. is this pop isn't this pop is this hyper pop isn't this pop hyper pop you know is this experimental it's like, it can be a little bit of different things, you know, like what would, what would the pop music thing to do be is a awful question to ask, mm. you know, just, I think fluidity is good. Yeah. No, I mean, that's, that's sort of a good way to look at it. And I think also says a lot about the current state of pop music, because I think that, um, I don't know, I think pop music in general is undergoing a pretty radical evolution in a way i mean you have people like taylor swift who are going acoustic you have lady gaga who's i don't know like you know role playing as a power ranger or something i mean it looks cool i i love it and the you know weird i'm not familiar but that, that's a great <laughs> i i might have to peep now <laughs> And and simultaneously, you, you do have this hyper pop thing going on underneath all of it that sounds in a lot of ways like, I don't know, um, it's almost like the world of pop that we were promised in the 2000s where it's so bright and it's so glitzy and it is so hyper, but then it ended up diverging into something else. And um, 
you know, and I mean, AG's AG's got that covered. Sure. AG's, it's, you know, between, I mean, like his, his own releases and, and the, the other stuff, um, on PC music and the new stuff that's been going on on PC music and everybody who's been following them, like that whole, the, the, the glitzy, like Y2K reimagined, you know, the, the, the lost future, uh, of it all. Like, yeah, that's, uh, there's, there's people doing that. And we definitely, we definitely take from that. Yeah. And, you know, but before I kind of dive a little bit deeper into that, just to uh, get this out of the way, because it was brought up a second ago, do you guys at all identify with or sort of fuck with the hyper pop label? Or do you feel like that's sort of like, I don't know, uh, a a little too nonspecific at this point or um, maybe even sort of confusing? (laughs) We fuck with it. Hmm. Um, It's. I didn't know that the, the Hyperpop playlist didn't happen until the album came out. I thought that was already something that had been established. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, I just, uh, they were talking about it when they were, there was like that end, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 NYT, New York Times uh, interview thing with like a few people that came out recently. And yeah. uh, when they were interviewing us for that, they said that and I was like, so shocked. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, uh, the label itself is, is cool for reasons that you would like a genre title, like, cause Mm -hmm. you can find different stuff through it. You know, you can be like, what's, Oh, what's, you know, hundred gex. What could that be considered? Oh, that's hyper pop. And then like people can find other stuff and other artists, you know, especially um, artists that don't have the same, like, attention that we do, Mm -hmm. uh, that people can find them through us as, like, a vehicle. Um, That's really cool. I love that. Um, I don't know if I would say if it completely, like, encompasses, because I just don't know, like somebody was saying that it's more of like a community thing Mm. uh in the in that article they were saying like it's more of like a a community-based playlist and like term for them um and that's i get that like that makes sense Mm. um yeah i it's a it's a cool term it's like we're down with it we just don't know if it like completely if everything that we do would be considered hyper pop, you know what I mean? Like we, I think we definitely cross over there, but like somebody like, like Dorian's first album hmm. is to me what I would consider like, that's hyper pop. That's the, the quintessential. But, uh, I mean, from what, from like where we had been, like hmm. if, if we are hyper pop, then we're hyper pop. Like if they made the playlist for our album, then I guess, yes, then, then we are, <laughs> we are hyper pop. But to me, like the offshoots of bubblegum bass and stuff, and you know, whether that's another term for hyper pop or if it's like prototypical hyper pop or whatever, like as if you would have asked me, a year and a half ago, if we had never dropped the album, like what hyper pop is, I would have said like something like Dorian's first album. Hmm. You know, this is something that, but now, um, but I, hmm. I like that the, I like that it's getting way more broad now though. Cause like yeah. now you have like the people that from SoundCloud and stuff, like the, the younger peeps that are coming in, uh, who are, you know, are being on the like hyper pop playlist and stuff. And like, uh, I love all that stuff and I love, you know, I love all the different like strands of everything. And I think that if we can strive for um, like a very inclusive, I just don't want it to be like such a small net. You know what I mean? If we can strive to make it a wider net that encompasses more sounds, that's ideal to mm. me. No, I, um, I think that's a good ethos to approach it with. Um, 
you know, it's it's just interesting. A couple of things about it are interesting. It's it's interesting to sort of see a platform like Spotify jump ahead and sort of like, I guess, validate it, you know, really quickly. Like this is a th- this exists. This is a thing like, you know, this isn't just some nebulous term people are throwing around on the Internet. We're like defining it and we're giving you a list of artists that are a part of it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't recall. Them yeah, doing it. I, don't, I don't recall them doing a similar thing with Vaporwave when like, you know, when Vaporwave was kind of getting going or, you know, other other similar platforms. Another thing that's kind of interesting and, and I, I think that you uh, could have something to say about this is. Uh, you know, the more I view the genre, and I think this is a great thing about the scene, obviously, it's part of what makes the scene uh, unique is that it has just a really strong base of support in artists and just like involvement from the LGBTQ community. And, uh, you know, to, to you, do you feel like that's something that is uh, just sort of by chance via the nature of, I guess, sort of like the scene and the ethos of it? Or do you feel like that's also kind of maybe in an unspoken way, just a part of the whole genre's identity? Um, I don't know. Um, I don't know what the, what the like crossover would would be like attributed to like why why um but it's great and i think that um i think it's great that people that might be any any people that might be like marginalized in other scenes can sort of like sort of come into the hyper pop thing and and uh maybe gain prominence a little bit easier. Um, and I think that's something to, to strive for. I think, I don't know. I mean, I think that it's something that we should like be trying to do is like be, be inclusive and, and everything. But the fact that it happened, I seemingly so naturally is great. Yeah. I mean, obviously like we hit that no problem. <laughs> so, yeah, and, and and that's that's sort of what's so interesting about it. It's sort of like become this, I guess, a- almost like essential, uh, you know, um, part of the scene without it being sort of like spoken about as sort of a part of, I guess, the ethos or the modus operandi or anything. You well, know, I think that's good. Yeah. I think it's, no, that, I think that it's is a good, good part that it. it's not. It, yeah, I mean, there's there's things you know you, you could go out and you know. It just ha- it just happens. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I I keep losing my train of thought. Um, oh, I mean, you know, it's it's it's, it's great. It's, it's great something... that it's it's great that it's effortless. That yeah. that everybody is just pretty much down, like a collective downness. <laughs> yeah, I I, I, I I'm guess that's. It. I guess that's all I was looking for confirmation on. It's just you know interesting that uh, it's it's kind of panned out that way in such a natural way, you know, because it's sort of yeah. it's, it speaks it speaks to the organic quality of of all of it. Yeah, I I agree. I agree. Hmm. Um, Very cool. You know, kind of another element of, I guess, the scene and its culture that stands out to me, especially, and I I think the music that you and Dylan make is, um, I don't know, another thing that it sort of seems to revel in or just be inseparable from is just, I guess, the chaos and, um, I guess, oversaturation of online culture, you know, and and meme culture and, and how overwhelming and difficult to define and i guess um i guess uh, you know just uh mentally burnt out that can feel sometimes you know um even though you guys uh with your you know kind of big debut lp uh presented just a lot of very short concise uh songs that you know range in a lot of different styles there is an element of it that does feel like a mental overload you know and is is that something that you you know feel like is intentional in a way or do you feel like you're just naturally embodying kind of the world that you were born into you know in the information age um i think both i mean like it is a part of my life a hundred percent like information overload all the time like I wake up, check my Instagram, like immediately might stay in bed, scroll on it for an hour or something like, you know, I've been hitting the bottom pretty, (laughs) pretty frequently. Um, Yeah, I mean, it's, 
it's um I think it's it's like such a part of like life now that it definitely has like a natural like uh, permeation into the music. Um, I like digging into that a lot. Like I'm, so I do it like, I guess, semi-intentionally. Like I, I, I am drawn to the, the chaos of it all and the, just being able to express that, like being overwhelmed all the time. Um, I, I think that it's like a great outlet for, for expressing that because like I could go on Instagram and I could write like a thousand words on I think th I think my brain is you know rotting out of my head from Instagram and then watch as the replies pour in you know and and get that little that little rush of whatever every time mm -hmm. you know somebody's like you're right oh my god your brain is rotting out you know or you know or it can put it into the music and try to, you know, make make something out of it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's such a real part of of life now that uh, both <laughs> both. Um, you know, in in a way that makes me kind of think back to your reference to uh, you know uh, uh, Daniel Lopatin Low Patton's music, um, because you know th there is an element of is of, it Lo is it Low Patton? I, I've, I've heard it sort of used that way recently, and I'm sort of wondering if I've been saying it wrong all this time, but I don't know. I might I, have been saying it wrong this entire time. I've been saying Lopatin forever. He, I know. A lot of people have. But um, uh, uh, b basically, you know, there, there, there's an element of futurism to a lot of his stuff, too, you know, that, that, that I feel like um, almost kind of parallels with that, you know, especially given the, the impact that he had on Vaporwave and sort of what that meant for, for futurism and music and kind of a revival of retro futurism and sort of like futurist aesthetics from a bygone time, too. But, you know, you guys feel almost like... I don't know, like, it, uh, let, let's not sort of give ourselves uh, an old version of the future. Let's take the newest version of it and sort of radicalize it in the noisiest and most hectic way possible and just sort of, like, give the audience that. That's definitely a, a conscious ethos that I have, for sure. Hmm. Um, and I, I, a lot of these things that I'm saying are true for Dylan, too. But, like, since he's not here, I don't really want to, like speak for him but i we are on the same page with many things um but yeah i mean i have a pretty conscious you know like i don't want i don't want a new a new version of the old thing i want to try to do something new and um you know but it's i mean it's a mix for sure like i indulge in nostalgia like anyone else um but like i do think that like it's cool to strive for a unique future instead of reclaiming a canceled one hmm. um the you know what fuck the world we were promised like what's the world that we can <laughs> that we can make and you know I don't know. I mean, it's, you know, there's all that like pseudo pseudo intellectual shit I could say about it. But like, yeah, I mean, we we try not to lean on nostalgia for real. Um, but like huge fan of of. Like the the um, Chuck person project and. Um, like I was running that shit constantly and like garden of delete is like one of my favorite albums like probably if not my favorite top three hmm. you know like it's so good and like you know i don't know i mean you can be <laughs> i think you can take you can take stuff from the past you can whatever you can reinterpret you can do a little bit of everything but i think that like yeah striving to to do something new and uh not leaning too heavy on nostalgia is a good thing okay um i think we're gonna before we 
head out, take some fan questions if you're fine with doing that. Oh my God, it's it's so late. I didn't realize how quickly time had passed. Yeah, you you didn't believe we'd be able to go an hour, and we're we're. I was like, I, I was like, I don't think I'm going to be able to talk for an hour. God, I probably ranted. I feel like there were only like three questions. That's that's why uh, <laughs> that's why you've been invited here to rant. So that's you've you've, Amazing. you've 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 done what you've come here to do. Thank you, thank you for that. Um, this no is problem. An, <laughs> this is an interesting one from uh, Connor is vile. That's this person's name. Um, there's a lot of interesting fantasy elements related to the Hand Crush Remix video and Tree of Clues. Does it connect to an overarching Gek lore that is being built? Yeah, it's all connected. It's, <laughs> um, you know, it's it's very it's very metaphorical. It's very you gotta like connect the dots and, um, yeah. There's a whole web of of uh, I mean, there's actually a whole lore uh, if you read, um, the lore that was written for Tree of Clues. Um, our friend Adrian and uh, our friend Lewis, uh got together and and made this amazing lore um so they pretty much did half the work for you and it's ju just up to you to fill in the dots fill in the blanks there it is, is that is that in here i haven't popped this open yet i i ordered this and i have not popped this open. you know it's so funny yeah. that like you're not the first person to say that like when we've talked about this Hmm. I think people buy the album and don't open it. Yeah, the lore is on the inside. I mean, you can also read it online. It's on, um, I think it's on our website. You can like kind of click through it and see the different characters. But it is in the, the gatefold, yeah. T typically I do, but honestly, I like, I just have, I, I, I have a giant mail pile. I, I have a giant COVID mail pile of like things I, I have. Like, it'll be worth, that I've... it'll be worth way more in 20 years if you don't open it i literally just opened it so fuck me I, I, you're I, fucked <laughs> I, op I opened it i opened it to read the lore so i'm fucked i fuck i opened it but yeah I'm, i mean I'm, also you can read it you can read it online you don't have to open <laughs> well, fu well fuck me i well, listen i i buy albums to open them I'm, I'm not like a you know hardcore you fucked up bad buddy you I fucked know, up sorry. bad sorry i, I it's fucked okay up. i fucked up bad i did i did fuck it up bad and i i, I believe i got the um I, I got I got the clear like splatter one too, so I double fucked up. That one that that would have accrued some big bucks, some three hundred bucks on eBay, some big fat bucks. And now now I done opened it. And now it's worth ten dollars after I opened the shit. It's like those uh, the the reopening old Pokemon packs mm. are uh, are getting big again now. So mm. the next the next big thing is going to be opening up old. 100 gex vinyl. I didn't form that idea before I started talking. I should have uh, thought about that a little bit harder. Hmm. Boring sentence. We should move on to the next question. Um, Isaiah Skirt Skirt wants, <laughs> wants to know, and maybe the possibility of this is uh, uh, there considering uh, the fat label deal and, you know, obviously uh, yours and Dylan's Big open. Big fat cats now. Yep, yep, yep. And, and, and the, the openness of, you know, you and uh, Dylan to different types of music and um, uh, obviously the the image of 100 Gex and its growing popularity. But will there ever be a 100 Gex K-pop uh, crossover? Is, is, is there any interest in that? Could that be a thing? maybe hmm. not ruling it out hmm. um yeah i don't know what really what to say about it but could be okay not not ruling out any any uh sort of collaborations okay who knows um dr nut 69 420 great name uh <laughs> they, they say that they loved your recent collaboration with health and, um, you know, want to know if you have kind of a general thought process or ethos when working with uh, other artists. Also, How to Dress as Human is one of my favorite songs. Thank you for that. Um, I like that song even still. Hmm. It is so old now. Um, thought process when collaborating with people. Well, I think it's sort of like a case-by-case -case basis because, hmm. like, sometimes the they are used to a different process so um you know sometimes they'll have something ready already a little bit and uh 
send it over and we'll kind of just like fuck with it. Um, we've done that with a couple of things recently. Um, other times, uh, it's more of, we've, we've gotten in the studio with people too, um, sort of recently. Hmm. So a, a case by case basis. Yeah. Just whatever, whatever way they're used to working and we kind of just like accommodate um let me see this this one is uh interesting from lost in the uh, lost in the cloud they want to know um what your thoughts are i know we've had a lot of discussions up until this point about different types of people having different types of takes on your music but um uh, this person notes seeing a trend in the comments of your videos saying that they're listening to your music ironically which, I mean, a lot of the time when people say that, they're just kind of pretending it's ironic, but then they go on to listen to it more, and then they're listening to it unironically. I mean, you know, what 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 is your thought on that kind of transition? I mean, for, for just, just my own take off the bat, I, I, I think that's more just somebody acclimating to enjoyment when something is new to them. But, uh, you know, the idea of listening to Gex ironically, but then actually legitimately enjoying it. Sure. Um I don't know. I think we live in such a time that like you can enjoy things ironically and I unironically at the same time. Mm. Um, I think that you can, um, yeah, you can have them both at the same time. You can go from liking something ironically to unironically. You can, uh, like something unironically and then later come back to it and be like, Oh yeah. Um, you know, I was a total this person and, you know, whatever. And, you know, there's, there's so many, like, it's the, the ironic or unironic is so like, <laughs> you, you know, I, I, I'm out, outdated. It's like, it's like, there's a whole thing between it. It, I feel it, like. it, it is. I think, I think it's almost like it, a good point in that, it's almost like the li the line between those two things is almost blurred at that point. Like ironic enjoyment is actually just like a legitimate form of enjoyment at this point, you know? Sure. I mean, if you just want to watch it to cringe at us, that's cool too. I mean, you know, like, <laughs> but like I'm down, I'm down for whatever way, as long as you stream it millions of times and, uh, are feeding me, right. uh, directly into my bank account you you can you can love it you can hate it just you know and, and that, stream that's, it a lot of times that and that and that's sort of i wish i wish people would uh, i wish people would ironically uh love the uh vinyl and just buy a bunch of vinyl <laughs> to ironically love it too that would be great um you know that's that's kind of the inadvertent genius of of content creation on the internet because uh, whether somebody is ironically watching it, unironically watching it, hate watching it, or whatever, it all kind of gets monetized the same. Like it, it sort of breaks down the barriers between all of those things, and it doesn't really matter. You can get famous or be successful off either. Yeah, what is it like? The YouTube algorithm doesn't the YouTube algorithm like equally weight likes and dislikes or something? That is potentially Some, something like that I, I know that your metrics on youtube and this is just me like watching a bunch of dumb shit but like i i think i've heard that like the dislikes also will boost your met your your algorithmic like whatever um that seems like a weird thing for them to do <laughs> yeah I mean, we're not i mean we're not we don't want people to not like it we're not sure. we're not doing like a a, a, a i don't want to say anyone specific we're not doing a thing where we we want people to hate it yeah. um but it is it is interesting yes that you can pretty much get super paid off being a really disliked person i think that is not my favorite thing <laughs> mm. But it is a thing, and so it does not matter. 
what I think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, you and Dylan don't go out of your way to be disliked or be controversial. It's uh, certainly not. We would love to not be controversial at all. <laughs> it, it's it's just sort of become this thing that I don't think anybody could have seen coming. Where it's just really getting this amazing cross section of reactions that uh, I, I don't really think there's any other group out there right now that's kind of generating the same amount of love and yet also polarization at the same time just by again not even you know there there are people who you know I, I literally clown on people who have made an entire like little internet career out of uh being the asshole being the bad guy being the dickhead but you guys aren't really going out of your way to you know um you know, I, I guess be cross toward anyone um you know, nope, I mean, if, we're just if, naturally if, awful. <laughs> well, if, 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 if no, any, no, I mean, no, yeah, I mean, it is, yeah, that's, yeah, it's definitely something that happened. I mean, if, if anything, and you know, d tell me if this is uh, not exactly your ethos, but I mean, you, you and Dylan strike me as almost, uh, I don't know, kind of like free, loving, hippie, dippy types, where you're just like, I don't know, just uh, yeah, uh, I maybe a tad bit cynical of the shitty world that we're living in, but also, you know, just open to whatever is kind of like, you know, welcoming you, I guess. Yeah, I mean, we're, I would say that we're pretty open. Um, I don't know if I would call myself a hippie type, but uh, <laughs> Dylan does wear Birkenstocks a lot. So I think <laughs> there's... um. Yeah, I mean, we um, we just like to do what feels good. We like to do what feels natural and good, and what feels good to us is sort of that that kind of shit, you know. Um, um, but yeah. So, uh, you know, as as we kind of head out, is there anything that you can, uh, I guess, say or give us a bit of a. a, a or some behind the scenes something on like the music that you guys have been working on as of late like is there an idea as to when the next project might come into fruition and you know uh, any any sort of like clues as to how that's been shaping up so far yes um let's see i have my i actually have a, a note of of things i wanted to to talk oh wow you came prepared briefly about Oh no, I I I write notes all the time because I forget everything. Mm. Um, I am incredibly forgetful. Um, well, Anthony, our album is shaping up. Mm -hmm. We are working on the follow up to the last album. Um, we are playing with some vibes. I I don't want to say too much. We are. There's different sounds at play this time. Um, we got bored of some things and have found new stuff that we're we're liking, um, but not. It's not like a grand departure or anything. I don't know. Whatever. It's a natural progression. Um, a lot of guitars happening. Uh, that um we are gonna have a song out that we are finishing up right now that will be out before the end of the year mm -hmm. so that'll be something to look forward to um thank you for as saving far as thank when, you for saving 2020 appreciate that thank you <laughs> we i don't know whatever it's just a cash grab dude yeah, it's, just... <laughs> i need a I need a swimming pool you know um yeah, no. So we we have a song that'll be coming out before the end of the year that we're we're finishing up right now. Um, we the the album won't be out anytime in the super near future, but we'll be we'll be feeding. Like we'll have stuff that we're we're doing and going to be dropping and stuff um, before the album. So people will be pretty adequately fed, hopefully. Okay. Um, also, tomorrow no Friday. Yeah, the, the night keep, of, night of uh, fire, the night of fire thing. I just wanted yeah. to do a quick plug. I yeah, I I'm, I'm gonna would, be, I'm gonna I be streaming say something about it. You go ahead and plug. I'll say that I'm gonna be streaming that okay. night, and when the stream is over, I'm gonna raid to the night of fire stream. So whatever viewers, oh, hard, cool. whatever viewers I have at the time, I'll be sending them. You know, your guys' way. 
Fuck yeah. Yeah. Um, people watching should uh, peep it. It's going to be cool. It is um, all the proceeds from it are going to go to the Los Angeles Downtown Women's Center. Mm-hmm. Um, there are cool people that are going to be playing. It is being put on by A2B2, which is a media site started by Andy Morin of Death Grips. I know there is some fandom crossover there um with yeah, we, you we, li- we so, like we like a few death grip songs over here we it's a couple i like a few death grip songs um yeah okay so i just wanted to i wanted to to plug that because i said i would and that's i'm excited for that i'm i'm doing some new stuff for that yeah um so that'll be cool but cool. yeah so things are happening people will be fed there will be a song before the end of the year new album is shaping up we don't know exactly when it'll come out yet we have an idea but i don't want to say and it's going to have at least one take of guitar on it okay is um (laughs) you know uh I'm, i'm just sort of curious about this because of uh things that have recently ballooned in terms of the popularity of Gex and the way that the, you know, remix album played out and everything, you know, as far as the creative process with the new record, are you and Dylan keeping all of that pretty in house and within the circle? Or are you guys kind of like expanding into features and other guests and producers and stuff like that? We're playing with a couple things. Mm -hmm. Um, We don't, we don't know yet. We have worked with a couple people Mm. on things that were potentially for the new album that we are still, we're still kind of like deciding what's going to all go into it. We're still sort of in the, we're like um, getting ideas together to sort of uh, refine into an album. Um, But Potentially. Yeah. We've, 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 uh, we've not shut that possibility out. And I guess, uh, you know, maybe for a a final question, like how would you say that your maybe creative and, and Dylan's creative process has changed, even though I know Dylan's been producing for years for a lot of different artists, but obviously, you know, Gex is kind of the baby that, you know, has kind of grown into this big thing that you guys are focusing on. But, um, you mm-hmm. know, would, would you say that your ethos approach and sort of consciousness of your music has shifted now that you have like this massive audience to serve with it? And I guess, is there this uh, worry about, um, kind of striking that balance between giving something new, but while also, I guess, maybe meeting expectations in a way of like what people sort of have in their head is sort of like the vision of, oh, this is what Gex is and this is what their sound is. Right. Um, there, we at like, af- right after the album drop, we are doing a bunch of interviews that were like you know is there any pressure does it feel any different or whatever and we were like no and there's definitely pressure like there's for sure pressure to you know you don't want to fuck it up you know um and but i think that now now that we're you know over a year removed from it it is sort of at the point again where we're like where's we're we're just gonna fucking do the thing we're not gonna try to like you know go go for like what the the geck fans want i think what what people would want or what we would want people to want is for us to be making whatever we want to do um and just sort of trust that like it's okay. We're, we, we've got you. We're not gonna, we're not gonna just drop awful music on you. Um, so it's, uh, it's something that we're conscious of, but we are just gonna, we're just gonna make stuff and, uh, and, uh, hope that people like it, which is what we did for the first one. So, well, thank you for coming through (laughs) and just talking with me and being an open book and, 
being a great conversationalist and losing track of the hour and uh, just taking the time. I, I appreciate it. We appreciate it. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Let us know when, uh, you know, uh, the new music's coming out. We'll look for that. And uh, as I said, you know, I'll be sending whatever viewers I have over to the Night of Fire. And, uh, you know, for those who are catching this on YouTube, we'll leave a link to, you know, A2B2's site down below. So you can check that out if you're catching it, you know, the day before. And uh, yeah, this has been great. We appreciate it again. It's been great. Thank you so much. All right. Have a good one.